the purpose of this video is to give you a quick overview of how to use the Easy Analyze Time Tracker. So um, it assumes that you have your data already set up, which is contained in another video tutorial. Um, basically, it means that you've already gone through these things. And what we're going to talk about here in this video are how to use these functions up here. Okay, so um, again, once you've got your, your data set up and you've got your student names in there, um, you can begin using the time tracker to keep track of the interactions that you have with your students. So, um, the kind of thinking about how it will work best for you is, is this. Uh, let's say you have a student who comes into your office, uh, Davy Jones walks in. So we'll search for Davy Jones by using this this uh, little box up here. It acts like a search box to help you scroll through your, your long list of students. And there we see we have Davy Jones. So Davy Jones is there. He comes in, he sits down, and you start the timer and have a conversation with him. Um, when you're done with the conversation, you can input some brief notes say that Davy wanted some candy because the meeting didn't last very long, just a few seconds. And then you click on this stop timer button. Whoops. We'll see here that if you forget to do something, the time tracker does a fairly good job of reminding you of what you need. Here we forgot to provide a reason. So he just wanted candy. Um, we don't have a code for that here. We might want to consider adding one later. But let's say that it falls under some uh, it's, uh, it's a responsive service under the personal social category because we were building some rapport, perhaps, and he really needed that candy. So now when we click stop timer, it tells us that we had a session with Davy Jones that lasted for a minute. That's rounded. It was probably closer to two minutes. Click OK, and now everything is reset, and we're ready to, to meet with our next student. Um, so while that does take a little bit of time to do, it doesn't take too terribly long. Um, other ways to use this interface here, and I view this as kind of the main interface for doing things, is uh, let's say that you actually meet a student outside of your office, um, which I think happens quite frequently. So let's say that you met with uh, Davy again. We'll find him. You ran into him in the cafeteria, and you sat and had lunch with him for 15 minutes and you were talking about his college plans. So we'll uh, pick a reason here for college individual student planning it happened over lunch. We'll type in some notes uh, lunch meeting discussed college plans and we can input the time manually so here um, we can use this to pick our time it was today we can change that if we need to. And we met with him for 15 minutes from 11.56 to, what does that say? Right around there, we'll say 12.12. 12. OK, and click OK, and it records the time. Again, just like that, clears out this interface, and that information is stored in a database, which we'll show you in a little bit. Um, so that's basically covers that covers the basis for uh, how to keep track of your meetings with individual students. Now with groups, if you have groups, you may want to predefine some groups. If they meet repeatedly, you're going to meet with them a few times. You can uh, set up new groups, which I believe was discussed in the other video. Um, so to record a meeting with them, let's say we have another lunch group, or we have a lunch group that we've created that's called lunch and we know which students are in there. Um, and it meets for personal social reasons. And we can say we met today regarding social skills will be our notes. And then we can just input the time for our lunch group. And it met from 12.15 to 12.45. Click OK. If any students were absent, you can deselect them now at this time. Um, so let's say Janet was not there. We just remove her, and she will not be recorded as being a participant in today's group. OK. Because this little message box that our group was recorded, and 
we're all set and ready to move on to our next task. So another thing that you might run into is when you meet with a, a group of students but you only meet with them once. For example, if you do a, um, let's say you do a presentation to an English class and you've got 15 students in there. Um, you can create kind of what I call an, an ad hoc group. It's a group that um, doesn't meet very often or only meets once perhaps and you can go through here and, and record it as a group time meeting with a bunch of individual students by selecting their names from this list. And I'm just selecting random names here, but you'll have real student names. Okay, so what happens is when you, even though this is set on individual, when you select more than one student from this list, the time tracker picks up that you're working with a group, and you can start the timer or input the time manually. Uh, we'll do it since we went to a classroom and we weren't in our office. We will input the time. Whoops, I forgot the reason again. Um, we went and did a classroom presentation on career planning. So now we can input the time here. So when, when you create an ad hoc group, it gives you an opportunity to name that group so that later when you generate reports, it's going to be recorded as a group with this name. So um, we can call this a homeroom presentation. And as long as you give it the same name for each homeroom presentation that you do, or no, it was an English class, wasn't it? English class. So as long as you type in the same name, and it does need to be the same name verbatim, um, it will report all of those students that you met with later as participating in this English class presentation group. Um, you can also, if you don't want to bother, if you just want to record it as individual times, each student's time will be recorded if you just leave this blank. Okay, we'll put an English class presentation, we'll click OK. It, our English class meets relatively early in the morning from 8 to 8.45. And here it gives you a little reminder, multiple students for 45 minutes today. Okay. Um, I also mentioned that let's say another reason you might want to use this is if you have two students who are having a conflict, if you might ever imagine that. Um, let's say Christine and Riva had a conflict. They come into your office. Um, select them both. We start the timer now. <coughs> we resolve the conflict. We send them on our way. In, send them on their way in 30 seconds or less. And now we're ready to pick a reason, conflict resolution, and add some notes. Um, arguing over uh, their MySpace pages. When we click Stop Timer, it gives us a chance to give this a name or not give it a name. Here, in this case, I would say it's appropriate to not give it a name, so we can just leave this blank and click OK and both of those students' times will be recorded. Okay, so I think that that's about it <coughs> with keeping track of student time here. Um, this gives you access over here on the right hand side to um, all the things that are available here on the main sheet as well. It's just another place to get to them. What I would recommend you do is after you've done some work with students that you click the save and close button just in case something funky happens with your computer, it makes sure that you don't lose any of your hard work that you've done to record that. Okay? Um.